Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this is our next installment of the Octurian Analog, which was channeled and written by Tom Kenyon. Now, if you're new to the channel, we have our past episodes are down in the playlist titled Understanding the Magdalene. I will put that playlist down in the description box below. Today we're going to be starting on page 65, which is Ektara, Ektara section. We finished off last time with Sunat Kumar. Now I know we did skip a week in this breakdown, and I thank you guys so much for being so patient. There was a lot going on last week, did not get a chance to record, so I thank you, thank you, thank you for being patient and allowing that week to pass. I also want to say something before we get started. I've had a lot of people commenting on my hair is growing faster and appears to be thicker. Yes, that is the case, and it is because of the ASEA. I'm laughing because I've always had thick hair. Like, as a kid, I had so much hair, like a lion's mane or a uh, worth of hair, and I work really hard to tame it as an adult. And when I first started doing ASEA, I was told that that would probably happen, but I just kind of ignored it because again I've always had thick hair so I was like yeah whatever but yes the ASEA now that I'm two months in on the products the ASEA is absolutely making my hair a lot thicker and it's growing really really fast which I mean I laugh I got my hair cut like a couple weeks ago and it's already past the point where it was when I got it cut so yes this stuff really really works um, as as I've said my boyfriend's he's in his 50s so his hair is getting thinner it's growing back I just took a picture the other day of his hair we're gonna wait for a month or two and take another picture because literally his hair is also growing well his is growing back I've never lost my hair but it's getting thicker and growing faster and you know, my boyfriend when he, before he started his hair started thinning out he had very thick hair as well he actually used to have very long hair and when it started thinning he cut it shorter as a man and now the other day he was like well shit I'm just gonna grow my hair back out again because it's literally he's got very wavy hair so it's literally I mean I think it's great I love it I love his hair being wavy but yes you aren't you aren't crazy you, what you're seeing yeah my hair is getting a lot thicker and it's growing a lot faster and yes my nails too are getting longer faster as well so it's just kind of wild that um that at 40 years old that's just you, you know the whole the whole thing about ASEA is that it's redox so it's a signaling system so your cells can can communicate so that your body can bounce back and and rebuild that cellular activity like it did when you were a kid right because after we go through puberty we start to lose the redox and the ASEA brings the redox back and a healthy person you can typically tell a person's health by the way they physically look so their eyes their skin their hair their nails i was saying the other day i don't know if i was saying it on camera or off camera but my mom's family all being in the medical world every time i would see somebody in my mom's family or even my dad would do this as a veterinarian they would always look at our nails they would take our hands and look at our nails as kids and it was just to check to see how our overall health looked if the nail is healthy if the hair is healthy if the skin is healthy then the overall health of the person is pretty good and so I'm just laughing because it's just wild. So again, if you would like to try the ASEA for yourself, again, the vanity side of it is just is secondary to the health. I'm my health-wise, the redox is helping me recover faster from physical exercise. I'm getting better sleep. I'm getting uh, my anxiety has lessened. It's just unbelievable. Um, any types of bumps or bruises that I have because I do bump and bruise myself in my practice. It heals a lot faster with this product. So again, if you would like more information on this product, all of my links are down in the description box below. But I would highly suggest that you text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's 321 321- 216-8047 if you're texting outside of the United States it's plus one three two one two one six eighty forty seven again just put Bryce info in the text message and you should get a response pretty quickly from Jay or Hillis to help you figure out what this product is give you the information what what's going to be good for you they can also help you try to get this product at wholesale prices if that's something you're interested in again all of that information is also down in the description box below too so you you can always go down there and look at the website or just text the number text price info to the number all right you guys let's go ahead and get started in our next installment of the Acturian 
anthology with Ektara. Again, on my book, this is page 65. So Ektara, Ektara is the science officer. I am known as Ektara. I am a science officer on the Octurian starship responsible for a sector, a sector of the Milky Way that corresponds to your solar system. Words are a limited medium when it comes to communications. As we Octurians are in the fifth dimension predominantly, much of our communications are telepathically transmitted holograms. These types of mental images contain far greater amounts of information than the sound bites of your word-based language. Nevertheless, we Octurians are a practical lot, and I shall endeavor to use what is available to me, albeit primitive. As a collective civilization, the bulk of Octurian collective resides in the fifth dimension, but there are many Octurians who have moved into higher dimensional realities. Generally speaking, the ninth dimension is the highest of the frequency domain that we reside in. This is very much an ascended state in relationship to the fifth dimension. And it is in the ninth dimension that one of the great figures of our civilization resides today. His name is Sunat Kumar, and he is responsible for the sector and quadrant of the space you call the Milky Way galaxy. And again, if you're new, we did read through Sunat Kumar's translations, not last week, but the week before. And the week before that, it took us two weeks to get through it. So again, those videos are in the playlist, Understanding the Magdalene, which I will put down in the description box below for you. As it is with human beings, we Octarians have the unique individual perspectives. Thus, while I speak in general terms applicable to the Octarian Collective, my perspective is, as yours, filtered through my own individualized consciousness. When we became an intergalactic civilization, we had already established our cultural commitment to life, intelligence, and freedom. We Arcturians, therefore, tend to view all situations through the fundamental philosophical foundation. As we became galactic explorers approximately 100 million years ago in Earth time, we carried this fundamental philosophy with us. And when we encounter new species, this was the filter and the ethic through which we interacted or not. I have been a science officer for the last 700,000 years in Earth time, and during this entire period, I was stationed in the vicinity of your solar system. Our task was, and still is, to protect life when it deserves to be protected, intelligence, and freedom. As a human being with a very limited lifespan, you may find it difficult to comprehend that a being could be this old, but in point of fact, in, in relationship to Octarians, I am a very young lad. As a science officer observing the breadth of your evolutionary history, I became intrigued and fascinated by your species. I should digress for a moment and mention a great ally to the Octurians. We call it regenesis technology and allows us to continue our life forms in the fifth dimension longer than normal would be the case. That reminds me a lot of what Thoth talks about in the Emerald Tablets, and that is another book that we are covering, or subject, rather, we are covering on this channel. I'll put the Emerald ta Tablet links down in the description box below. But he talks about this, uh, Thoth talks about this contraption, this technology that's in the halls of Amente that allows them to regenerate their life. And it's interesting, speaking of this book, in the beginning of this book, speaking of Asiya, they speak about a liquid that the Octarians have Tom Kenyon drink in order for him to vibrationally be with the Octarians. And as I read it, as you'll see in that video, if you watch that video or rewatch that video, I said, I think this is a SIA. Many people have said with Thoth's commentary with the Emerald Tablets, with the machinery that are located in the halls of Amente that allow people to regenerate their bodies, sounds like a med bed. Yeah, but we know, again, I'm going to tell you guys, like if you're sitting at home waiting for somebody just to bring you a med bed or waiting for somebody to bring you money, it's never going to happen, right? That's, that's not how this works. You have to be working on yourself in order for the technology and the information to meet you halfway, 
For example, if you've done absolutely no shadow work, like let, let's take something that a lot of people struggle with. Like let's say that you struggle with your weight. Let's say that you're like 40, 50, maybe 100 pounds overweight. Now, the reason why you're overweight, yes, is because you're eating too much, absolutely. But the reason why you're eating too much is coming from a psychological or emotional trauma or wound. Now, if you don't work on that, if you don't do your own shadow work and try to figure out your wounds and healing your wounds and you get into a med bed, nothing's going to happen. You're not going to lose any weight, right? It's only going to help you drop the weight if you yourself are doing the work to figure out why you have the propensity to overeat. Same for people who are alcoholics or drug addicts. Why are you doing this? The food isn't making you overeat. The alcohol isn't making you drink it. It's you. And so if you're not doing that work, if you're just sitting around being lazy, just waiting for someone to come bring you the answers, then the answers are never going to come. You have to be available to start that process so that this technology can work for you. It's like the ASEA. The ASEA is, is allowing, is, is supporting your body to heal itself. It's not the ASEA that's doing it. It's your body that's able to now heal itself because of the support of, of ASEA. I hope that makes sense. I hope, and again, if you're confused by shadow work, if you're new to this channel, we've, we've spoken about this a lot. You can always ask me questions down in the comment section. I have created templates of shadow work, all that kind of stuff. But I just want to stress that, like, no one's coming to save you, my friends. Your job is to save yourself. That's why you came to Earth as a human being, is you have to figure this out for yourself. No one is coming to save you. And how terrifying would that be if someone was coming to save you? Because if you allow someone to save you, then they now have control over you. If you allow someone to support you, to protect you, then you are handing your power over to that person. As an Octarian science officer, my area of focus has been the evolution of biological life forms, electromagnetic intelligence, and the variation in cultures that exist on your planet and on other planets. You meaning humans, are not the only show in town. We know this. You exist in a universe breaming with embodied and unembodied intelligence and entities. The fact that you are not aware of the complexity of life and intelligence in your own cosmos is due to the fact that, you're, that you perceive the world through a primitive nervous system, and you are landlocked through your five senses, and you are imprisoned, biologically speaking, by the gravity well well of your planet and the sun, I might add. And yet, as a human being, you already possess varying labels, levels of higher dimensional realities, but you are not aware of it. As I view your evolutionary trajectory, I would say that your potential lies in a collective shift into fifth dimensional reality, and what I mean by collective shift may not be what you imagine it to be. And once again, I want to clarify, when they say dimension, they're talking about consciousness. When we say density, we're talking about nature. So density, we're in third density, moving to fourth density, which is the nature, the body, the earth, everything. Dimension, however, is consciousness. So that's another thing that I think people are, I find that people are really having a hard time with. And we've talked about this on the Enough is Enough channel. I've talked about this countless times on my channel. I'm going to say it again. Your body, your nature, your identity in this life is not really who you are because it's only temporary. Who you are is a soul. These are two different things. Your soul, your spirit, whatever you want to call it, and your body, your identity are two separate things. Okay? Your body, your, your nature is the shakti, is the experience of the soul. People, I don't know if it's ego. I think people's egos and pride get really big. So like, I, my name, in, in this existence, my name is Bryce. That's the name I was born with, Bryce Elizabeth Watson. Born with that name to my parents, um, February 4th of 1983. I'm a white woman from Georgia. 
but that's not who I am eternally. That's the expression, the experience in this life. My boyfriend, for example, same thing. I'm not going to say his name because he's extremely private. His name, his life, his, he's a chef. He does all these things. That's his experience for his soul in this moment in time. And each of us individually, like for me, for you, my soul, my eternal self, my soul, my, my Atman, my Brahman, the eternal side of me is watching the watchable, which is the nature. And it's that tango of the Shiva Shakti. Again, the Shiva is the Purusha, the Shakti is the Prakriti or the nature. So the Shakti, the body, is the expression of the soul, but it's not the soul. Yeah? So like we look at a Picasso painting, for example. Let's take Picasso. Let's take an artist. So a Picasso has done many, many famous works of art. We can look at these works of art and say, that's a Picasso painting. But it's just an expression of Picasso. The paintings aren't Picasso himself. It's just an expression of Picasso. Same thing with your body and your soul. Your body, your life, me as Bryce, is an expression, is an experience for my soul right now. But my soul isn't Bryce. Bryce will one day die. But my soul will move on and my soul isn't tied to the identity of Bryce. I've been many identities in my past life. So have you. You, you Let's say you, you were a woman named, I'm just making a name up, Roberta Thompson. Let's say you were Roberta Thompson in 1817. Well, you're not Roberta Thompson anymore. You see what I'm saying? You're, some, you're, you're, you're you know, Thomas Smith now. Does that make sense? The outfit you wore yesterday, even though it's your clothes, you picked it out, you tried it on, you decided to purchase it and wear it, that outfit, you might have clothes that are your favorite clothes and clothes that are not, but it's your outfit, it's your clothes, right? But it's not you. You take it off, you change, you put it back on. Yeah? Here in the South, in Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia, we have Six Flags over Georgia. Six Flags is an amusement park, tons of roller coasters, all sorts of stuff. And when I was a kid, I loved going to Six Flags. I don't think I would like it so much now at 40. I haven't been in years. But anyway, Six Flags, there's tons of different rides. There's like, if I can remember correctly, there's like the Superman ride where they strap you in and they fly you. There's the Free Fall ride. There's like Splash Mountain. There's the Haunted Mansion ride. There's all these different rides. Some are more intense than others. Some are for kids. Some are for adults. Some you have to be a certain weight, certain height to do, right? These are all, and when you do these, these roller coaster rides, which are what, like two minutes long, you're having an experience in those two minutes. Your adrenaline is, rump, is running. Your nervous system is running. You're screaming. It's an experience. You're intentionally strapping yourself into a roller coaster so that you can have the experience, the thrill of riding that roller coaster. And when you get off, let's say the Superman ride, you then get to decide the next roller coaster that you want to go on. Is it going to be the free fall? Is it going to be Splash Mountain? And the free fall and Splash Mountain, these two different rides, are going to offer you another experience, right? The free fall drops you, Splash Mountain, you splash into water. These are two different simulated experiences for you to enjoy. This is what your lives are like. So all of your past lives are in that amusement park and your soul is the continual thing. So you and that is you are the person experiencing all these different rides. The rides change, you have it. Same thing with your soul. So when you're looking at all your past lives, your soul is the one continual thing where every life is offering you a different experience. So my life as Bryce who was born, I was born into an upper, upper middle class family, pretty wealthy family. I had a lot of private school education, a lot of stress too. There's a lot of abuse in my childhood, which get into one day, just because people have money doesn't mean there's happiness. But with that money comes a different experience, right? Different struggles, different perspectives. If you were born in a life, let's say you're born in the slums of India or in the projects, there's going to be a different experience because of that sensation of lack. Does that make sense? And so all of these things in your life today are simply experiences, simulations, just like the Superman ride, just like Splash Mountain, for your soul to know itself. 
it's not for me to know I'm Bryce. I know I'm Bryce in this life, but it's for my soul, for me to understand that I'm actually not Bryce. Bryce is just a roller coaster ride for now. And my soul is something different. So regardless of what happens to me in this life, what experiences I go through, and it's with the deepest pits of sorrow is when we really experience that friction because in, in that pain, in that sorrow is usually when we are questioning, why is this happening? Why? What's going on? Wow, this hurts. I don't want it to hurt, but wait, it's temporary. But if it's temporary, it's not real. Does that make sense? I really think if people started to let, and when we when we start to understand that, that like I'm not Bryce, that's when the ego starts to dissipate. Now, with that being said, as Bryce now, I have to be thoroughly invested into this life because if I'm not thoroughly invested into this life, I'm building up karma to bring to the next life. So I say this to people all the time who get really obsessed with past lives. Like there are people that getting get annoyingly, it just annoys me. Like I'm just like, this is, this is bullshit. Your past lives were experiences. What you're taking from a past life is a karmic experience that you're now shifting into this life. So in order for you to heal the karma, to heal the wound that maybe was picked up in a past life, all you need is the information from the wound. Because you're holding it in this life, your job is to heal it as you are now. So for me, any, any past life issues that I inherited from a past existence, it's not it's not productive for me to go back to that life and relive it. My job now is to experience that friction as Bryce and heal it as Bryce. Does that make sense? And then once this body is done, my soul will move on to another existence. Hopefully I won't pick up too much karma. Hopefully I can just go into another with a, with a little amount of friction. And I say with people who are obsessed with past lives, to me, as somebody who's been working in the yoga world for 17 years and in and out of India for many years, that is a huge red flag for me that there is something that you're avoiding in this life. By focusing so much on the past lives, what are you escaping in this life? Because if you're trying to escape something in this life, Best believe it will follow you to the next one. It's not going to go anywhere until you deal with it. So might as well just go ahead and deal with it. Yeah, I hope that makes sense. I know we kind of I went off on a tangent there, but if you have any questions about that, we can further discuss it. I think a lot of people, though, I think that's where we get into the whole us versus them, good guys versus bad guys, all this kind of stuff, because we are so flung so hot, so tightly to our identities that we don't realize that our identities aren't even real anyway. When you die, you are not going to, I'm not going to be Bryce anymore when I die. I'm just going to be a spirit. So why am I so egotistically, narcissistically stuck to Bryce if Bryce isn't even real? It's kind of ridiculous, right? It's like one floor over the cuckoo's nest, yeah? So anyway, I hope that makes sense. Back to Ektara. In your earthly science, there is a very accurate understanding regarding the rise and fall of, the, of information. It is best described as a bell curve. From my perspective, the fundamental question is twofold, how and when. Let us address the how first because this is the easiest one to describe. If you draw a line in your mind and place the outline of a bell, you will see one edge of the bell in a very small space. As the shape of the bell rises, you will see a larger space between the edge of the bell and the line underneath. As you move forward along the line, the space gets larger and larger until you reach the maximum height of the bell. And then it curves and tapers back down into a symmetrical form that is related to the first half of the bell, a mirror image, if you will, with the second half of the bell matching exactly the first half of the bell. And by the way, guys, I'll put a link to the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. If that's something you want to research more when it comes to Prakriti and Purusha, Shiva, Shakti, Soul, Body, I'll put that link down there as well so you can start doing your own research into that. In biology, most populations of organisms from the most minute viruses and bacteria increase their popul populence according to the bell curve. 
As we move up to human beings, a similar template applies, including such obscure things as population increase, the rise and fall of disease, and enlightening episodes in the history of humanity. Something interesting about disease and viruses, coming from the law of one of the Cassiopeians, and according to the East, to the yoga text, we need disease and viruses because that's how we evolve. That's the friction. So now you see how the controllers have tried to even confuse us about that. Diseases and viruses are necessary in order for us to evolve. And they, the, I think it's the Cassiopeians. I think it was them that said, like, you know, if we look throughout history, whenever there's been a huge uh, leap in humanity of development, an industrial re revolution or something, you know, the renaissance, it's usually right after there's been like a plague, right? So you can kind of see the patterns in nature that these are necessary in order for us to propel forward. What I mean by enlightening episodes is the high point of a particular bell curve. In this case, I am applying it to your history as a civilization. In your history, you have had many civilizations, most of them long ago forgotten, like Tartaria. These civilizations were nestled in the geographical location of a specific human population. And while one group would rise upward in understanding, their, their neighbors might remain ignorant. What you call the Renaissance, I was just talking about, is one example of an enlightening episode. The Renaissance slowly built itself from a small collective of human beings living in what you call Italy. It reached a crescendo like a bell curve and then tapered off. I like how he says what you call Italy. Because if you guys have been following along with the Tartarian information, the boot that's in the Mediterranean probably isn't actually Italy. <laughs> Our whole geography is completely off. In fact, there, there's an old Tartarian map I saw on, I can't remember what video it was on, but it was showing the map and like where Italy is now, there was like nothing there during the Tartarian period, which is empty fields and land. So interesting, isn't it? All golden periods of your history are enlightening episodes, and these golden periods follow the bell curve. In your current moment of time, in your current evolutionary trajectory, I see a most fascinating situation. It is fascinating for me because I am in the fifth dimension observing it, but it can oftentimes disturb, be disturbing for you who have to live it, especially if your per perception is confined to a third dimensional reality absolutely so even if you're a truther and you're all upset because the white hats haven't helped you yet then you're still asleep you're still living in the 3d you're you you have you can't even see see what's happening the illusion through the truth you can't even see the truth through the illusion at this point right this, there's a bigger thing happening here and it's not up to your comfort level whether something flips or not you are entering a globalization of civilization, and whether it will be on your benefit or not remains to be seen. Absolutely. I'll say it once again. Stop sending me pictures of the Schumann residents. I know. I know. Obviously, you guys, if you think ascension is only for the positive, wow, are you asleep. Wow, are you asleep. You are brainwashed and asleep. Yes, we are ascending. However, you guys just saw my fairy, my orb go behind me. However, however, listen very closely. Those in the back, listen very closely to what I'm saying. To go forth in city negative is also an ascension. The earth has to ascend. It's time. The earth has to grow up. It has to go to fourth density. We just don't know if it's going positive or negative. You sending me the Schumann residence proves nothing. It proves nothing. We know we're ascending. We just don't know which path we're going. If we go negative, Schumann resonance is still going to go up. So stop it. Stop sending me that. It makes you look ignorant. Instead, read the law of one. If you have not read the law of one, you have no clue what's happening right now. You are still in the dark. All right? And I'm not trying to be mean about this. I'm trying to get you to wake up. Because I don't want to go fourth density negative. So I need you to wake up and be a team player here. Stop falling for this bullshit. If you consider yourself a truther, you're also brainwashed. You're just as brainwashed as your friends who follow the media. That's the truth. You're, it's two sides of the same coin. The truther movement and the normies. Two sides of the same coin. Two wings of the same bird, both controlled by the cabal. If you want to get out of that, 
you have to understand what's actually happening right now and stop falling for the bullshit. That means you're going to have to actually get off your butt, stop being lazy, stop waiting for somebody to come rescue you, and do the work yourself. And if I didn't think you could do that yourself, I wouldn't be talking about it. So the fact that I'm, I'm saying this to you means that I believe you can do this. I believe that you are strong enough, smart enough, powerful enough to leave the matrix. But you've got to do it. And I think being nice about it, being like, oh, no, it's cool, it's fine, just enables people to sit with their on their butt and just continue to be brainwashed, right? What is it Mark Twain says? It's easier to fool somebody than convince them that they've been fooled. It's because the ego and the pride that you have a hard time accepting. I, I've had to accept where I've been duped and fooled. Got to wake up. You didn't come here to be a passive observer. You came here to actually do something. You're the white hat. Surprise. You're the white hat. You're the military. Get off your butt. Start doing some research. Stop being played for a fool. Stop being a tool for the cabal. And if you're considering yourself to be a truther, and all you're doing all day is watching gossip videos over which celebrity has a penis and who doesn't, you're falling right into the hands of the cabal. You're doing nothing to help humanity or to help yourself. All right? Just putting that out there. So he's what he's saying is correct. We don't know. We know we're ascending, but it's yet to be seen whether we're going negative or positive. It's up to us. <laughs> However, there's a human civilization arising that is planetary in nature, not identified with na nation states, not identified with a specific landmass, but with the entire planet. If you have shifted into the burgeoning reality, you will think of yourself as a global citizen. The game changes, changes dramatically if you have to move to this reality, and yet the paradox is that in this moment of time, as I give this information, there are pockets of humans living in very different centuries, perceptually speaking. You have some who are becoming aware of themselves as global citizens who accept the responsibility of a new stewardship of the planet. And at the same time, you have others who exploit the planet and even other human beings for their own greed. Yes. And the truth or community is part of the latter, along with the globalist. Exploit the planet and either other, other human beings for their own greed. That's also the truth or community. It's the same side of tr truth or community, normies, same side of the, two sides of the same coin, two wings of the same bird. Okay, the other... So the first group he was talking about, those are those of us who've left both worlds behind. Okay? You can leave both worlds behind too. There are those of you who recognize the exquisite beauty and inheritance intelligence of evolution. And there, there, there are those who believe the world was created in six days. <laughs> yeah, because Christianity is part of globalism. Christianity is part of the cabal. Yep, it's all a lie. There are some who know that the sun does not rise or set upon your earth. Rather, it is a rotation of your earth that creates these illusions. And at the same time, there are those who think the sun does rise and set because their eyes tell them. So there are even some who believe the world is flat. I have no idea what the world looks like now at this point. I don't know if it's actually flat. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's what they tell us it is. But I, you know, I've never, and I'm comfortable with that. I'm totally fine with not knowing what the earth looks like. I'm totally fine with that. But if you're one of those people that gets real arrogant, that you know what the world looks like, honey, that's your ego. That's narcissism. Check it. It's actually more powerful to be in a place of, I don't really know, and that's okay. All right? Because have you been to outer space? Have you been to outer space? Have you seen it with your own eyes? No, you haven't. So how do you know for sure? Right? Humility. Have that humility. You have on your planet simultaneously those who are moving up the bell curve of planetary global awareness and responsibility, while many have not entered the bell curve at all. Most of the people who have not entered the bell curve at all are in the truther community. We got to all wake up. And if you're busy complaining about your neighbor who's still asleep, listen, that's not about your neighbor. It's about you. Where are you still asleep? Where are you still programmed and brainwashed? Those higher up the bell curve who see the emergence of a global humanity with the ethical realities that awareness brings are forerunners. They are visionaries. To those in humanity who have not entered the bell curve of this awareness, such visionaries are not to be trusted. 
Indeed, such persons may be deemed to be dangerous because they see the world and human potentials in a new way. Yeah, that's why you get death threats all the time from Christians. And my assumption, it is my assumption that if you had read this far, you are a forerunner for a visionary who senses the emergence of a new humanity. I extend to you my congratulations and my condolence. My congr I, con I congratulate you for graduating to a higher level of intelligence into the possibility of a new reality. I extend my condolence because it made me feel very lonely from time to time. Absolutely. And as I said, I get just by me telling you that you got to save yourself, I get death threats from Christians. Also because I read the missing books of the Bible, which I will remind you guys, if you are anti-censorship, if you're somebody who is anti-censorship, then you have to actually be anti-censorship. Being anti-censorship doesn't mean getting mad about the stuff you want out there being censors. It, it means that you have to let, let everything be out there including the missing books of the Bible. So check your hypocrisy. If you're mad because you're getting banned on Facebook, but yet you're pissed at me for reading the missing books of the Bible, then you, my friend, are a hypocrite. And you actually, if you think the missing books of the Bible should be banned, then guess what? You support censorship. And if you support censorship, then you got to be honest and say that you think censorship is valuable. You are either anti-censorship or you're not. You can't have it both ways. Okay. You might feel as one of your, your science fiction writers wrote, a stranger in a strange land. In point of fact, when you enter the bell curve as it moves up, you become more disconnected from the collective that lies in the lower part of the curve. What is clear to you may be obscure to others. You are ahead of your time, metaphorically speaking. Depending upon your circumstances, you might take comfort in the knowledge that you are seeding a new reality for humanity. On the other hand, you might feel cursed from having this realization. And with that being said, we're going to take a quick word from one of our sponsors. If you are like me, then you love a good face mask. No, I kid you not. I have been obsessed with face masks since I was a teenager. I have memories of being in high school and having slumber parties with my girlfriends and trying different face masks. This has literally been something that I have been obsessed with my whole life. Now, the problem with me is that I have very dry skin. So I have to be very, very careful with the type of face mask that I use. Otherwise, it will dry my skin out too much and that itself starts to cause some problems. Well, of course, ASEA just released its own face mask. It ran for a trial run last month, and it looks like it's possibly, potentially here to stay. Now, of course, once the mask was released, they were gonna be doing the mask, I had to order one, just so I could try it out. Because again, girl loves a good face mask. I was a little bit nervous. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I was a little bit nervous that it might dry my skin out. But nonetheless, I thought, what's the harm in trying? I've loved all of their face care system I've been using up until this point, so let's just try the mask. Well, true story, I got the mask in last week. And so that night when I got it in, I washed my face. I put this mask on, when you, which you leave on for about 10 minutes set my bath up, my, ni my nightly bath, put my Epsom salts in, all that kind of stuff, grabbed my murder mystery book. I'm always reading some murder mystery book. Got in the bath, soaked for like an hour, washed the face mask off, got out of the bath, did the rest of my skin routine, went to bed. Well, the very, very next morning, I was in the kitchen with my boyfriend. We were still in our pajamas super early in the morning, and he reached over, touched my face, and gave me a kiss, and he noticed that my face felt tight. Like, I had had, like, a facelift or, like, Botox overnight. Now, he was not aware that I had done the face mask. He didn't even know that it had come in the mail the day before, and I said, interesting, I literally just did the ASEA face mask. And I went to look in the mirror and it had appeared overnight that my skin had tightened. Now, yes, I am 40 years old, so I'm kind of at that hinge age, right? I'm still young, but I'm moving into middle age. And so I am even more aware now about what I do to my skin as I enter into the latter part of my life. 
since that first time using it, I've used it a couple of more times and absolutely I am feeling a difference. It really feels like I have had just someone pull the skin back. It's unbelievable. And so you can order the mask on its own. I actually have a couple more masks coming to me because I wanted to stock up. That's how good this mask is. Or you can get the bundle along with the brush. Personally, I have not used the brush, nor did I order the brush. I just use my hands. Or if you want, you can order a bundle of either your personal spa day with the with the lotion which i do have this lotion as well or you can come over here the ultimate gift for mom we know mother's day is coming up or if you just want to send your mom a gift because you know what you wouldn't be here without your mama or you could actually just order this for yourself but the mask again the mask is really something special because it really uh, after the first use i noticed a difference and so did my boyfriend so if this is something that you're interested in please look down in the description box below and you will see a link to the asia website where you can read more about the mask or all the other products that are offered by asia if you would like more information on asia what the products can do for you, what products would be best for you, how to get a SIA at a wholesale price, then you can text Bryce Info, B R I C E Info, to 321 216 8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to the telephone number 321 216 8047. If you are texting from another country, please make sure you add plus one. 321-216-8047. Not sure if the mask is available in other countries just yet. I know they're planning on releasing it to other countries, but some of the other products are definitely available in other countries. So please just text Bryce Info to the number listed below. Again, all that information is down in the description box. You live in a dualistic universe and every perspective, no matter how elevated, has its antithesis. An unfortunate thing about human nature, which I observed for some times, is its tendency for narrow-mindedness. And paradoxically, the more narrow-minded an individual or collective group of humans may be, the more violent the reaction to new possibilities. Let me read that again for those in the back who did not hear. An unfortunate thing about human nature, which I have observed for some time, is that its tendency for narrow-mindedness and paradoxically, the more narrow-minded an individual or a collective group of humans may be, the more violent the reaction to new possibilities. As a growing number of human beings wake up from the hypnosis, as well as the manipulation created by religions and governments, ding, 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 religion and governments, same thing, guys. Your church is no different than the deep state. They're the same. The stronger the bell curve becomes, it is, it is as if there is a stampede of humans who are completely unconscious now moving into semi-consciousness with a vague feeling that they have been lied to by those they were taught to look up to and obey. This shattering of naivety is very difficult for most human beings to manage. There is a no man's land, or perhaps I should say a no person's land, which is related to the rebalancing of male-female polarity on your planet. This no person's land is a period in the development of human beings from a limited sense of national and religious identity to a global, planetary, and cosmic sense of identity. During this difficult psychological period, the individual human has not reached the point of resolution, but is still conflicted with what he or she sees to be lies and manipulation since the beginning of human's conception. When a human passes through this state to a place of being a global and planetary citizen, the conflict of history are put behind, and instead the individual human works the new reality and lives life according to a new life affirmative, human affirmative values and ethics. Regardless of what you may feel as an embodied biological life form at this time in history, from my perspective as a scientific observer, large masses of human beings are jumping ship. They are leaving the old reality, including its institutions, behind in the dust. They are forging a new planetary humanity and a new destiny. I trust that this will give those of you higher up the bell curve some consolation. You are not alone. This is my message here. Other humans from your species are joining your ranks. The scales of history are tipping.